preface of Is Mars Habitable? This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Is Mars Habitable? A critical examination of Professor Percival Lowell's book Mars and Its Canals with an Alternative Explanation by Alfred Russell Wallace, Fellow of the Royal Society, etc. Preface This small volume was commenced as a review article on Professor Percival Lowell's book Mars and Its Canals, with the object of showing that the large amount of new and interesting facts contained in this work did not invalidate the conclusion I had reached in 1902 and stated in my book on A Man's Place in the Universe, that Mars was not habitable. But the more complete presentation of the opposite view in the volume now under discussion required a more detailed examination of the various physical problems involved, and as the subject is one of great popular as well as scientific interest, I determined to undertake the task. This was rendered the more necessary by the fact that in July last Professor Lowell published in the Philosophical Magazine an elaborate mathematical article claiming to demonstrate that notwithstanding its much greater distance from the sun and its excessively thin atmosphere, Mars possessed a climate on the average equal to that of the south of England, and in its polar and subpolar regions even less severe than that of the earth. Such a contention, of course, required to be dealt with, and led me to collect information bearing upon temperature in all its aspect, and so enlarging my criticism that I saw it would be necessary to issue it in book form. Two of my mathematical friends have pointed out the chief omission which vitiates Professor Lowell's mathematical conclusions, that of a failure to recognize a very large, conservative, and cumulative effect of a dense atmosphere. This very point, however, I had already myself discussed in Chapter 6, by means of some remarkable researches on the heat of the moon and an investigation of the causes of its very low temperature, I have, I think, demonstrated the incorrectness of Mr. Lowell's results. In my last chapter, in which I briefly summarized the whole argument, I have further strengthened the case for very severe cold in Mars by adducing the rapid lowering of temperature universally caused by diminution of atmospheric pressure as manifested in the well-known phenomena of temperate climates at moderate heights, even close to the equator. Cold climates at greater heights, even on extensive plateau, culminating in arctic climates and perpetual snow at heights where the air is still far denser than it is on the surface of Mars. This argument itself is, in my opinion, conclusive, but it is enforced by two others equally complete, neither of which is adequately met by Mr. Lowell. The careful examination which I have been led to give the whole of the phenomena which Mars presents, and especially to the discoveries of Mr. Lowell, has led me to what I hope will be considered a satisfactory physical explanation of them. This explanation, which occupies the whole of my seventh chapter, is founded upon a special mode of origin for Mars, derived from the meteoric hypothesis, now very widely adopted by astronomers and physicists, then by a comparison with certain well-known and widely spread geological phenomena, I show how the great features of Mars, the canals, and oases may have been called. This chapter will perhaps be the most interesting to the general reader, as furnishing a quite natural explanation of the features of the planet, which had been termed non-natural by Mr. Lowell. Incidentally, also, I have been led to an explanation of the highly volcanic nature of the moon's surface. This seems to be absolutely to require some such origin as Sir George Darwin has given it, as furnishes corroborative proof of the accuracy of the hypothesis that our moon has had a unique origin among the known satellites in having been thrown off from the Earth itself. I am indebted to Professor J. H. Pointing of the University of Birmingham for valuable suggestions on some of the more difficult points of mathematical physics here discussed.
And also for the critical note at the end of Chapter 5, Professor Lowell's Estimate of the Temperature of Mars. Broadstone and Dorset, October 1907. This is the end of the preface.